This is the eighth video in the video series with Portal Mechanics of Python. This one I'm going to be talking about orbital perturbations and it's going to be the, I guess, the start of like a sub-series of what the orbital perturbations are and I'll go through each of them individually. Um, this one's going to be the J2 perturbation. So orbital perturbations, um, there are any force besides the central body of gravity. So earlier or in all the videos that I've made thus far, you're assuming um, two body dynamics. So it's just the only bodies that exist are your satellite and the central body. Um, where in real life, this is not true and you're all looking at perturbations on your orbits. Um, some examples here, earth oblateness, which is J2 and other higher order terms, but basically the fact that earth is not a perfect sphere. Um, aerodynamic drag, there's still an atmosphere in space. Um, third body gravity, so the effect of the moon's gravity in your orbit and even the sun's gravity as well. Solar radiation pressure, um, the light from the sun, it has no mass but it still has momentum because fun with quantum mechanics I think. Uh, so it still will give your spacecraft momentum just the light from the sun. Um, doesn't affect you too much in Earth gravity but if you get to say orbiting an asteroid, um, it's a uh, it's a very big deal and you really have to account for it. And then relativity as well. So GPS satellites actually have to account for relativity. Otherwise their measurements will be off by quite a bit. Uh, fun fact, I might add that later on. It's just it's just an equation. Uh, it, obviously relativity is super complex, but at the end of the day, when you put it in the orbits, it's just an equation, which is kind of funny. Um, and most of these perturbations also apply to your attitude, um, which I think actually I'm gonna make videos later on down the line about attitude, attitude control, and attitude profiles, because I think they're pretty interesting as well, and kind of go along with this, but that's just there for now. So, um, I wanted to show the Earth, um, the J2 effect, uh, the oblateness effect of the Earth. Um, yeah, the constant perturbation, uh, yeah, the J2, as I said, there's J2, but then there's J3, J4, J5, I think down to like J8, or some large number, um, but J2 is by far the biggest one, so that's when you're just having your first pass at modeling your orbit, that's what you're going to use. Um, and then what's important here is that right essentially in the setting node, argument of perigee and time since perigee passage are affected. So I can show, I showed this plot in the first video, um, where you can see this is, this is the effects of the classical orbital elements um, under just a J2 perturbation. So you can see um, your argument of perigee over time is increasing like that. And your right ascension of ascending node is well, increasing magnitude or decreasing, however you want to call it. But then the rest of these values are just oscillating. So they're not, it's, um, yeah, it's a periodic effect, unlike a secular effect with these two. And that's kind of what this is saying. And you can see kind of a graphic. So when you're up here, you're getting pulled more towards the equator than you are to anywhere else. So the basically where the um, your acceleration vector is pointing is not towards the center of the Earth. And that's what happens with, um, with the oblateness. And I'm going to post a video on that too because I'm just going really quick through it. So if you want a more in-depth explanation of what's going on there, I'll make sure to post the video. So to software, um, first thing you want to do is uh, apply this to the orbit propagator class. So first thing, this might seem a little weird now because we're only going to have one value and this video is just going to be J2, is it on or off? Uh, but later on you'll see that this actually makes a lot of sense. And I actually ran the, I'll explain that in a little bit, but I actually ran the memory problems when I didn't make this function, which I guess I'll explain later because it doesn't make any sense. Um, return, so we're just going to return a dictionary um, that defines what perturbations you want. J2 is false. Um, so basically you're going to call this um, function. Um, it's just going to give you, so later down the line, what this will look like is you say arrow drag false. And um, what are the ones that I say? Um, moon gravity. Actually, I'll just keep these in here. Moon gravity, false. Solar gravity, false. And the reason you want to have this here is you don't want to type out every single time you're defining um, your perturbations dictionary in here. You don't want to type out every single one. You just want to load this dictionary and just say, I want J2 and just call that true and then just ignore everything else. So I'm actually just going to leave those there um, just because they're all false anyway, so I want to get called. And then once you get to your init function, you're going to make it an option. Um, uh, what's it called? You, you're, it's not going to be an argument that you have to pass in um, just because sometimes you don't want perturbation and you don't want to see a true body orbit like we have been doing before. So just don't worry about it. So perts equals null perts. 
and it's calling a function because it's returning this um, dictionary. And then just say define perter perturbations dictionary stuff dot perts perts just like that. Pretty, oh shoot, I accidentally closed it. Hopefully I don't lose that. Okay, so so the perts equals perts. Okay, we got that. Um, yeah, so that's defining it in the init function. Just make sure you're calling it in. And then where it's going to be called is here. Um, so I already wrote this down because I didn't want to kind of, again, bore you with equations. But what's happening here, um, so you have, same as before, your two-body acceleration. And then after that, you have your J2 perturbation. So if the perturbations dictionary, the J2 attribute is set to true, then calculate it and then add it to... Um, the acceleration that's already here. These are all arrays, so you can just add them element by element like that. Um, again, just equations um, for the J2 value of the Earth. I'll get to that in a second. And then mu radius, just an equation. I'll, you know, I'll post a video to kind of explain it. That is what you're doing. If you're calling the J2 perturbation, run that. If you're not, then just don't add anything to it. And this is the same as any other two-body orbit. You don't have to worry about it. And all you have to do is pass in one dictionary. And that's supposed to be um, kind of just like, again, level of abstraction. Just say, I want this perturbation. Okay, cool. And then let orbit propagator take care of it. And then as far as this J2 value, um, just another value that you add to the planetary data um, for each body. Just a J2 value. It's just a, a number. And there's a lot of math that goes behind how to find this and how to apply it. But again, when you're plugging it in here, it's actually pretty simple. Just have that number. Um, so I think that's good for that. And then we'll get to here. So, um, again, I want to do an ISS example. So, in this current directory, I copied over this ISS.txt, which looks like this, um, like that. So, what I want to do is I want to create an or propagator class, op equals op, where we have the, our initial state is going to be t.tle to code because it's a function we wrote, so this makes it really easy. Pass in the file name, ISS.txt, and you're good to go. Um, yep, so that's the first argument. And then I have it written. Oh, whoopsie. Yeah, the codes. And then you have to make sure you have degrees equals true. And then T span DT. We go T span, let's just say 20. Uh, oh, I have it up there. Yeah, 24 hours. But actually, I'm going to make this a bit longer so you can see. So you can see kind of the effects of um, what's going on, 100 time, and then, oh, and then you say, perks, dt, oh, codes equals true also. So this perts equals perts, what you're going to do is you're going to define this dictionary as perts equals t dot null perts or just null perts because this is a new import um you're calling it here so for the input that was before was from orbit propagator in import orbit propagator from now it's and then now you're adding from orbit propagator import null perts where it's a function so you call it and then super simple you just say perts j2 equals true and then you have your j2 turned on um, yep, and then if everything went well, as you propagate orbit is already in the um, init function now, so you don't have to call it. Plot 3d show plot equals true. So you have all that. Did I pass everything in? T span cos dt cos tag. Yep, that should all be good. Let's see what kind of errors we're looking at. And it works. Cool. Wow. That was one with no errors. That's amazing. Um, it might be a little hard to tell. It's a bit subtle, but these lines are thicker than they are before just because there's more passes going through them. Um, it's not just one um, time going through. So it's, it's making a variation to those parameters, but it's hard to see on this scale because um, the earth radius is so large. Like these are the values we're working with. But they do have a variation that is noticeable, as you saw in the in these values. Like this is a noticeable effect. 
if over two days, you know, 48 hours, you're going to get a change in RAN of roughly 8 degrees and then a change of argument of perigee of about 13 degrees. Um, so that is significant if you're trying to talk to the spacecraft because if you think it's somewhere and then it's actually somewhere else, you might not get to talk to it. So this is something that you have to model. And yep, th that's about it for this one. I think I kind of showed just how to implement it. And kind of the most important part of this video is understanding that this um, perturbations dictionary is we're going to build on that. So as I defined it here, again, I didn't use these in this video, but um, I'll get to the aerodynamic drag um, kind of term and how to uh, implement that in. Um, the moon gravity as well, the solar gravity. Maybe I'll get to relativity, I don't know. It's not actually too important unless you're doing GPS, but that's the kind of the important thing to grab here is how to apply this. So all you have to do when you're actually calling it is just say, give me a perturbations um, dictionary and just J2 is true. And then let Orbit Propagator do the rest of the work. So I think that's it for this video. And in the next one, I want to go ahead and um, write that function. Actually, before that I write the aero drag um, function, I want to just plot the classical orbital elements because it's going to be easier to see what's going on with these perturbations if you see these as opposed to just the plots where, again, the earth rate is so big that like, it's hard to see what's actually going on. I think it's going to be useful to just show you how to plot these and then, in general, just map plot lib. Oh, not that one, but the map plot lib. Um, it's actually a very powerful tool. This is a Python plotting tool. You can do a million different things with it. And um, going through kind of how to write this will sh show you just a little bit of how many options you really have in writing these types of functions. So that's it for this video. A uh, quicker one, which I actually kind of want to do. Um, I feel like the videos have been getting a little long, so that's why I want to split it up a little bit by making this uh, part one, part two, part blah, blah, blah. Um, so yeah, just let me know any comments, anything also that you think I should cover that I haven't mentioned yet that you'd like to see. I'm also all ears. And yeah, thank you for watching.